Good morning, guys. I'm sure all of you have been missing all that sweet Miss Tate action that you're used to getting every day. Well, no fear. Miss Tate is here. So today I'm going to teach you about an artist named Andy Goldsworthy. And we are going to do some collecting like we did in the last video. We're going to work on a radial project very similar to our last one. So we're gonna be kind of building on what we did last week, but this week we're gonna be using natural materials and learning about an artist named Andy Goldsworthy. So buckle up, get ready, let's make art. Okay guys, today we're gonna to talk about an artist named Andy Goldsworthy. Andy Goldsworthy is an artist he is known for being a sculptor, which means he makes three-dimensional artwork, and he is a photographer. A lot of his artwork is temporary or it is in nature, so you can't take it home and put it on a shelf or put it in a museum. So he had to become a photographer in order to document the work that he was making. He was born on the 26th of July in 1956 in Cheshire, England. So England is all the way across the ocean from America. Currently, he lives and works in Scotland in a village called Penpont. So you can see on a map, let's see where it is. There's the Scotland area. He studied art at the Bradford College of Art, just like Miss Tate went to college for art. So when Andy is doing work, he produces artwork using natural materials such as flowers, mud, ice, leaves, twigs, pebbles, boulders, which is another word for giant rock, snow, thorns like you would find on a rose, bark like from a tree, grass, and pine cones. And many of these things you could very easily find in the St. Louis area, um, especially if you live near a park or an area that has trees and things like that, or you could always go to Forest Park. So this is what we know about Andy Goldsworthy. He loves to use natural objects to create his artwork. So that means he's using things that he finds outside. So I want you to look over here on the right hand side and see if you can name some of these natural objects. So take just a second to see if you can figure out what he used in this spiral here and what he used here, over here, and down here. This one is super awesome. And if you need a little bit more time looking at this you can always pause it for a second and come back. He's won many awards for his artwork. And he has shown his artwork in many exhibitions. And he even has a bunch of books. And I actually have a DVD, um, a movie documentary that he has done also. And we actually here in St. Louis have one of his pieces of artwork in the art museum over in Forest Park. Uh, so next time you're there, you can ask anyone who works there where the Andy Goldsworthy is. And I am gonna let you figure that and what that piece looks like on your own. You're welcome to Google him or look him up online and figure out um, what his artwork that's here in St. Louis looks like. So here's what we're gonna do today. Miss Tate is going to go out and do some collecting. In this particular slide, it talks about making a picture with leaves, but I don't want you to feel like you can only use leaves, especially since it's spring and a lot of the trees don't have their leaves yet and stuff like that. So what I want you guys to do is go ahead and use a lot of different natural materials. And then you're welcome to do this artwork on paper Miss Tate is going to show you how I did this just on my front porch, and then I had my kids do it outside in the backyard. Um, because a lot of us don't have paper or glue and things like that at home right now. So, 
Ms. Tate is going to transition out of my slideshow and into my video that I shot creating my Andy Goldsworthy inspired design. So this morning my daughter and I went walking around our neighborhood and we collected some violets. These are like little purple flowers that are growing all over people's yards. These are some really interesting seed pods. They're from a magnolia tree, but there's one down the street from our house and they are all over the sidewalk. These are some seed pods that are actually growing on our tree that I pulled off. These are from a tree that's down the street. These, well, they're from the beach, but I found them in my basement. I don't know why. We must have had them from a previous project, but technically, they do appear in nature. These we, um, I really liked, my daughter and I really liked the shape of these leaves. I thought they were really cool. So we picked some of those out of like a side yard. And then we found these really cool seed pods that were um, at a playground that's by our house. So we just kind of went on like a two block walk. Didn't have to go very far, just sort of found these things. The mission is to find things that are out in nature so that you get a nice little walk so you're not stuck in the house all day, but not ruining anyone's yard, not touching anything that you shouldn't, and not picking up any trash or anything that might carry the virus or any other yucky germs. Um, so when we went out and did it, we did bring um, just a bucket. You could use like an ice cream bucket, a grocery bag, laundry basket. We just had this handy dandy bucket left over from a birthday party or a trick or treating or something. Who knows? Miss Tate has all the things. But this is our collection of stuff. Your neck ties. I have ties. I know. I have a tie that looks like my daddy. I made mine look super interesting. And I put these right here because I didn't know what the violet should be for. And I just and I wanted them when mm -hmm. I was picking them because they look really pretty. They add some nice color too. Yeah. And it says Kenley all over it. Kind of. All right, guys, I'm back in my home studio. I hope that everything went really well, that your collecting went good. Get your designs all built. Photograph them with, a, with mom or dad's phone, or you can use an iPad, whatever you got. Upload them onto the site. Email them to Miss Tate, and I can't wait to see what you made. Doodles, poodles.